What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one, I'm going to break down what's going on with Neo stock and what you should be watching for moving forward. I'm also going to talk about Tesla Spy and the QQQ and a couple of other tickers. What's going on with the overall market that's very, very important as we have some big data coming out for tomorrow. And also, what's happening to Neo stock as we have some important data to discuss. But before I break anything down with all this information, before I talk about what's going on with Neo, why it's not looking bad whatsoever in my eyes, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you're guaranteed five free stocks. That's a $50 cash reward. The offer ends in just one day. It ends tomorrow, so check it out before they run out. Anyways, now let's talk about what's going on with the markets and NEO. NEO was down 2.02% for the day. Once again, still showing some weakness after that earnings report, which is not necessarily the best for them yesterday. However, it's still not looking that horrible in my opinion. Here's exactly the reason why. Let's zoom out of NEO and look at the last like week and a half, right? NEO hit this level right here. 10.6, it bounced off of it. It hit 10.57, bounced off of it. It hit 10.5, bounced off of it, 10.5, it bounced off of it. And then right here, it actually uh, came all the way down to about 9.46, just temporarily because of its earnings. It came down, but then look at this wick. It got bought right back up to 10.3. And the low from today was around 10.4. My point is it's been making these lows besides this one like drop before it got bought right back up. But the lows have been, have been between 10.3 to 10.6, right? Back and forth and back and forth. The point I'm trying to make is that it is trying to base at this level. We're continuing to see buyers stepping in, trying to defend the 10.3 to 10.6 area. And we need some kind of bad catalyst for that to break downwards. Otherwise, it's going to try to bounce very soon, most likely. Now, is it going to happen immediately? Maybe not. You know, this thing's been shopping for some time. It may continue on this trend for some while. But eventually, I just want to note that we have this bullish divergence on NEO's chart. If you look at the RSI and the MACD, they're continuing to trend upwards while NEO is still trading flat. We made this low right here, and yet the bullish divergence still remains. And we're forming this bullish divergence right before the very, very beginning of September, right? We're approaching the end of August. I say this because you have to remember that for September, Neo is going to be announcing the August deliveries. And if they do relatively well for them, if they're just decent numbers, Neo could try to bounce. If they're really bad numbers, then that may not be the best. But I'm optimistic the ES6 was still killing it. And let's hope we get some good numbers for Neo. Now, for tomorrow specifically, the market may start off not the best because we have PC data coming out. We may gap down tomorrow, but there is hope for the market to bounce intraday. Uh, the reason why I think the odds do favor maybe a, a possible slowdown tomorrow morning is because of what's looking uh, in the numbers, when you look at CPI, CPI on the core side was as expected, but uh, CPI in itself was a little bit hot. If you guys remember the last CPI that came out, there's a slight increase, and that is what we're forecasting for PCE. So PCE is another very important inflationary uh, measure by the Fed. I'm going to be watching this very carefully. I believe that core PCE is going to be very moderate, very close to expectations, but I'm not as sure about PC in itself. PCE could be a little bit hot, but maybe the forecast is like 3.2, 3.3%, and that could change everything from here. Now, to add on to this, uh, NEO reported its earnings, not the best of earnings. You know, they kind of missed on EPS and revenue, but that's because we ended up seeing this drop, right? We saw this drop uh, in NEO's deliveries overall. There was slowdowns in demand, which were outside of NEO's control. And then as a result, NEO ended up slowing down. Now, what could have offset this would have been maybe if NEO tried to cut prices or find a different strategies to get sales up. They didn't do that till the very end, but as long as they continue to improve, as time goes on, the margins will uh, improve. There are economic hardships right now, which are kind of slowing them down, at least in the current stance. But what's good about NEO is NEO's first uh, phone is going to be launching in late September, most likely, according to reports. This is, once again, very good. It's Android powered, which is still good news for them. This could help bring in more revenue and hopefully help them become more profitable. I am quite excited about this. And it's going to be very interesting to witness, right? This is making a lot of headlines right now. Neo to launch the first mobile phone in September to boost their appeal in the EV space. When it comes to some other pieces of data, you could see right here on Tradedix, Neo has a buy rating from Deutsche Bank. Besides that, Neo is trying to continue to hold up. And finally, when we look at seasonality. It tends to be a little bit better for Neo. If you look at like Thursdays, they're up about 51% of the time. It's almost a coin toss, if anything. There tends to be more volatility during 
the third to last and then like second to last or like the final hour of the day for neo so we're going to be watching it during the sixth and seventh hours those are going to be very very important and finally uh the short interest is starting to go up just a little bit but nothing too crazy we're going to be watching this as well and just keeping a very close eye on this neo dropped but look at the volume only 46 million it's not really dropping on high volume which is another decent sign so when it comes to the charts let me break down something important with pce data coming out for tomorrow there's a risk that the market could gap down if neo were to gap down we're going to be watching 10.3 or so maybe a little lower it could touch like 10.25 to 10.3 then i expect buyers to come right back in and try to push this thing back up to about 10.7 and continue to maintain these levels for the time being i think neo is going to remain kind of sideways for an extended period of time but this thing is set to be forming a possible inverse head and shoulders with the left shoulder here the head down here we could be forming a right shoulder for the next couple of days before getting that push to the upside the bullish divergence suggests that there's going to be a bounce coming soon possibly because of their deliveries although i can't promise that that seems more probable as of right now so yes we may see some sideways price action for neo for tomorrow but for the medium term there's a good chance of a bounce as we approach september based off their deliveries i think the odds greatly favor that i'm going to break more about that a little bit later for spy we have this potential rising wedge like pattern it's been continuing to push up but i do believe the odds favor this thing maybe coming down a little bit uh getting a, like a, a bit of a cool off after the rsi is very overbought on the four hour time frame uh, we have pce data coming out it may cause the market to kind of like gap down tomorrow hit 448 to 450 then bounce and start pushing higher for the next few weeks i do think spies can hit the mid 450s i'm still bullish on the markets guys i'm just saying that there may be a very healthy pullback very very healthy thanks to the pce data before the market tries to balance and continue pushing i just want to make that as clear as possible so make sure you're open-minded and just know that we have to be ready for different levels of volatility in a market like this all right just trying to be open-minded just trying to be honest as as honest as possible so we're going to be watching for a possible pullback tomorrow in the morning. I think the odds favor that based off PCE, and then we could bounce from there. Same thing with Tesla. I mean, we have this bearish divergence. It started to come down just a little bit. It might come down a little bit more, maybe retest 250 or so, but just cool off on the R side just a little bit before this thing gets a bounce and starts pushing higher. It's going to hit the 270s most likely in a couple of weeks. Before that, we may get a small pullback before it goes even higher. Same thing with Apple. I mean, Apple's trying to break out. It still looks bullish, but it's very, very overbought. And the RSI, when it's this overbought, we tend to see it cool off just a little bit. Uh, that's what tends to happen historically. You guys can see that quite clearly. We have a nice cup and handle, but I would really like to see Apple cool off a bit first. Maybe fill some of these imbalances first and then come right back up. We could see a retest of like 185, then a balance and a push to 190 later on. It all depends on PCE, so make sure you're open-minded. I can't predict it perfectly, but I do believe the odds favor maybe a very healthy little pullback before the market continues. There's also a possible rising wedge on the QQQ. If this ends up causing some downside, we could see three uh 375 being retested maybe even this high right here the breakout area to be retested around this 373 zone before it bounces and starts pushing for the 380s so i'm bullish on the markets i'm still a bull guys i think the market's going to push up uh for the time being for the next couple of weeks but before we push higher we could get a healthy gap down or pullback first before anything before we continue higher so i just want to make that as clear as possible uh if you don't believe me you could also look at you know the rising wedges and historically how the market looks uh pce is not something i could promise but it is a possibility that you have to be like super super wary of uh, on nvidia stock this thing has an uptrend that's been respected it looks bullish overall i think it's going to push up higher uh, later on but before that happens right we have this potential rising wedge that's forming on it uh, if that's the case for it uh, nvidia is trying to cool off a little bit if it continues to cool off then we're going to be watching to see you know a very healthy retracement first so it depends on 500 it may retrace a little bit more retest like the 485 area then balance and then start pushing for 500 plus later on so that's what i'm seeing for nvidia with that said i think most stocks will follow this trend with that said i thank you all so much for listening please have an absolutely spectacular day everyone neo may remain sideways for an extended period of time before this thing starts to launch and with that said just take care and do what you have to do i thank you all so much and wish you all have a great great day thank you neo to the moon because the long term is very bright and peace out